So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Brandon Lewis. He, uh, I think he's the Northern Ireland secretary, being coy about whether there is a, a border within the Irish Sea. This is comical because he's been called out by, of all people, Andrew Marr. And Andrew Marr does a rubbish job holding people to account. So imagine if this was a decent interviewer, you know, interviewing Brandon Lewis because... Boy, does he stumble here. He's struggling. It's embarrassing. Let's watch the video. Oh. Uh, you tweeted this um, uh, not so long ago. There is no Irish sea border. Can I just ask you... So look, let's have a look at the tweet here. He said, there is no Irish sea border. As we have seen today, the important preparations the government and businesses have taken to prepare for the end of the transition period are keeping goods flowing freely around the country between GB and I. So he's saying there's no problems. Um for goods flowing between GB and, and to NI. And this is on January 1st, probably in the morning he tweeted it where, you know, he probably didn't see the impact of the uh, checks. But this is so funny, right? He's saying, oh, the, the, what Irish sea border? There's no problem here. And now he's talking about, oh, the EU being purist and all that stuff. You know, that's a spoiler. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to ruin this video for you because this is funny. You straightforwardly to accept that that is not true uh, well i've said before that i fully appreciate that that tweet has not aged well and the what do you mean not aged well you know it's it's done horribly badly because we know there's a there is a trade border within the irish sea and we know that goods are being disrupted what are you talking about bruv like on january 1st like you were looking for some big win like why would you tweet that like oh bro, are you stupid honestly i think that tweet is still up as well i genuinely think that tweet is still up like what were you thinking when you tweeted that? Surely the, the Tory, like GCHQ or whatever they're called, right? Not GCHQ, that's something else, you know. CCHQ, Conservative Corporate Headquarters, or whatever they're called. Those monsters over there, right? Surely they should have been on to you and be like, bro, what are you doing? Like, I would have been, if I was working within the Tory propaganda machine, I would have been like, bruv, delete your tweet. Because that, <laughs> we know there's an Irish sea border and we know it's causing disruption and that's the only thing the Tories talk about is implementation, interpretation and legal purism because that's all they have because they can't explain why the Northern Ireland Protocol is bad or doing damage to Northern Ireland because it's their own fault all the problems the Northern Ireland Protocol is making is the fault of the government and they can't accept it that's why they're blaming the EU saying legal purist, interpretation um, implementation and we'll see those buzzwords in the, in this video and we can see that this guy has no idea what he's talking about the only thing he knows is he's got to rattle off Tory talking points that's it so let's go the reality is well, it's worse well, than that. But it's, That's when you broke the trust of a lot of people in Northern well, Ireland. They looked at that and they said, come on. Uh, well, and actually on the 1st of January, we were very clear that we wanted, we were going to have no board, no... No, bro, you can't say, oh, we were very clear, we wanted to have no checks and whatever. Like, you can't say we wanted not to have it because you, you voted for it, you implemented it. You decided to have this. And, you know, point being is that I'm not surprised if a lot of people within Northern Ireland distrust the Westminster government because... They blatantly lied to them, like uh, the minister to Northern Ireland, which I'm pretty sure is Brandon Lewis, brazenly lied to these people on Twitter with no remorse. And now he's kind of joking about it. Oh, that didn't age well, did it? It's like, dude, you didn't leave the milk in the fridge for a day too long. Like you've left out in the street in in, in the 46 degree heat and now it's mouldy. It's, it's, it's damaged. You can't drink it. It's stinking the place out. That's what you've done sea border mm -hmm. what's happened since then is that what we have seen is the impl the uh, implementation of there is implementation there's a buzzword right there the protocol the outworkings of it the way the the purest way the eu wants to oh there's another one purist there's another one there so you got two two out of the three like i said you know what's he said implementation and purist you know it doesn't explain what these things mean because you know, if the EU are sticking to the letter of the law, which they are allowed to do with regards to Northern Ireland Protocol, how are you going to complain about that? Because you agree to it. See, it has meant that we've seen disruption in Northern Ireland. But not only isn't what people foresaw, okay. but goes against the protocol itself. Stra That's why we need flexible solutions. Questions. Is there an island? The subtitles are really far behind. It's irritating me. I can't change that. I'm sorry. Sea border. This is where it gets good. Listen, listen, listen to this bit. Let me let me crank the volume a bit just so you can hear this. Well, we've got to make sure that there isn't one. OK, and you've already voted to put one in. So you failed. You know, you're a goalkeeper saying, oh, we've got to make sure we don't concede any goals. You're 4 nil down already. Sick one. At well, the moment... Right there is, now, look, is there Andrew, there, at the moment... Well, it depends on how you now? describe what I... It depends how you describe a border. OK. A border, you know, that stops one thing getting from one place to another. We'll describe it as that. Is there a border? Is there a thing stopping goods going from GB to NI? Uh, goods, yes. It's the Irish Sea border 
um, that has been implemented via the Northern Ireland Protocol. I probably phrased that badly, but it's the the checks that are mentioned within the Northern Ireland Protocol. There is a there is a border within the RSC, and this man here, like, oh my god. Personally, would say that what we've got to make sure is that we've got good free flow of products, GB to Northern okay. Ireland, but Northern Ireland GB is working. Quick. Northern Ireland to GB is working, yeah, because we're not checking goods coming in from the EU to the UK. And before anyone says, well, Northern Ireland isn't a part of the EU, that Northern Ireland is part of the EU's um, single market for goods. So that means goods going from GB to NI aren't being checked by the British government, just like goods from France to GB aren't being checked. So this argument is making, oh, yeah, uh, the other side's working, you know, NI to GB is working fine. Um, it's not meant to be. There are meant to be checks there because that's a backdoor into GB once we start doing import checks. You massive... Ah, oh, this guy. Pain. Pain is what I feel right now. Is there or is there not well, right now? Well, there is, no, if, if you travel to Northern Ireland, as I do regularly, when you go through the airports, you're not going through a border in the sense that anybody expects a border. But I'm... So he's saying that because because like you can travel freely uh, between uh, GB and NI, you know, that's not, you know, there's not a border there because typically you'd be stopped or whatever, like, this guy, what is he on about? I'm not denying the fact there is big disruption in Northern Ireland for big... So he, he, he denied that there's a border there, but he argues that there's big disruption there. Is it because of the trade border, Brandon Lewis? Is that why there's disruption? Is it because you implemented a trade border there? Businesses and consumers, we need to rectify that and we will do that. Do you think it's kind of hands up mon Sunday morning? Do you think you should say hands up and apologise for that tweet to people in Northern Ireland? Well, Can you do it in song form like Nick Clegg did? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry. Can you do that, please? I I'd love it. I've already said, I, as I say, that tweet has not aged well. We've got to make sure that we are delivering for people in Northern Ireland. We get the... F yeah, he didn't apologise. He said, we're delivering for the people in Northern Ireland. I mean, do you know how you can do that? You know, put proper staff in place, put the facilities in place to do the checks. And once you've done that, go back to the EU and say, look, we've implemented the uh, Northern Ireland protocol fully. We want to get a veterinary, a veterinary agreement with the EU. And that will get rid of most of the checks that happen within the RSC. If you want to help the people of Northern Ireland, if you're talking about all this damage and stuff being done, that's what you would do. But that's not what you're going to do, is it? Is it, pal? I'm going to tell, explain to you something in a very limited and specific way. Stop lying. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.